welcome to the big water. I am Nishtita. Well, first up, it has been quite a tense few days for the Mandya Congress with two warring factions coming to the fore, one that of Ramya and the other that of Ambarish. But now with the former Chief Minister SM Krishna finally stepping in, looks like things could have finally cooled down a bit. Here's a report. The frosty relationship could be traced well back to May 2013 when Karnataka Assembly polls were held. How could one forget the insult to the rebel star? He was made to sit in the second row as the Yuvaraja of Congress, a.k.a. Rahul Gandhi, and former Union External Affairs Minister S.M. Krishna shared the dais. And that relationship continued to go cold even as Bipol for the Mandya Lok Sabha constituency was held. Although Sandalwood star Ramya won the elections, things didn't look like they were returning to normal. But now, the situation seems to be changing. The Congress top bosses have decided to bury the hatchet, probably once and for all. KPCC President G. Parameshwar himself admitted that unity was the need of the hour and more persons had been appointed in the Mandya DCC to step up campaigning. Sanmanya Sam Krishna Aura, Sanmanya Ambrish Aura, Aura Ashir Vada Aura, Subhashe Guru Yavutu Kuda Mandya the Janate Jayde, Adrinda Ali, Sanna Putta Vityas Galana, now Namahanta the Les Serimar Kulti, Adreli Ava Gondala Kudaila, Sadi the Lekara Dekshana, Nem Kamartivi, Matu Inu Kuda, Kelu Upadekshru, Matu Pradana Karida Shiglu, our Neller Nukuda, Nem Kamadi, Ichuna Vanega Aurana. Hechu Sajumarte, Shakti Kurbeka, La Elrigu Kuda on the Shakti Kurbeka, the Adukoskara, Inno Brukaria Dexuidre, no Hitchin Retail Kelsamarta and Wanta Udesha, Karadexer Madidru on the Takshana, Lena Gondala Gudidental. Former Union External Affairs Minister SM Krishna endorsed Parameshwar's viewpoint, saying that the Mandya Congress was united. The former union minister also said that he had spoken to the rebel star who is currently in Malaysia post his surgery in Singapore. Sandaputta Gondalagudu Kabibs Ella Nivaraniagide Yelru Mahala Hurkninda Chunaune Martarin. Amravati Chandrasekhar, a close confidant of the rebel star, said that the Congress top bosses in the state had agreed to be present in Mandya for the inauguration of the campaign office. Mandya Jilla, Lok Sabha election which are like Nama, Iriya Naitraga, SM Krishna Sahib na beti adho kandhi di election which are maata rakya. Sahib ru beti maani, yerne tari ko nadi du paduwara ya, nalik chante ke Mandya Jilla. Kacheri, Chunavana Prachar of Kacheri, Utigat Navy, at the Sahara Kariya Pandizi, Opiza, Auro Permission Saru, Nalkan to get Kacheri open Maraki Budwara Bartha. The Congress won the Mandya seat after wrestling with the JDS, but in fighting could land the former body a blow unless in fighting is resolved. As of now, all is well in Mandya Congress, but will it remain the same till the polling date? Well, we will have to wait and watch. A news and report. And meanwhile, even as Congress mulls over the contenders that it has for the Varanasi constituency, there seems to be a third hat in the ring. Rashid Alvi has sent across a letter to Sonia Gandhi evincing interest to take Modi head on. Here's a report. Varanasi is set for an all star fight. The platform is already set for the fight of the big wigs in the land of temples. Varanasi with the BJP fielding its PM candidate Narendra Modi and the AP challenging the Saffron Party with its chief Arvind Kejriwal. And as of the Congress, the age-old party has maintained a mystery around its candidate. But the Congress has time and again said that it will field a prominent candidate to dent Modi's prospects. Ever since the Congress opened the doors to field a formidable candidate against Modi in Varanasi, an array of leaders are staking claim to fight the Saffron Party's big man. 
It was widely speculated that AICC General Secretary Digvijay Singh, who has a contentious history with the BJP's PM candidate, will be the chosen one. Digvijay Singh too said that he was ready to take on Modi. And after that came Union Minister Anand Sharma. He too wanted to contest against Modi in Varanasi. And now, another taker for Varanasi fight. Seems like the Congress leaders are taking turns to seek a ticket from the all-star constituency. Today, senior Congress leader Rashid Alvi joined fellow partisans chorus in seeking a ticket from Varanasi. Alvi has written a letter to Congress President Sonia Gandhi for the same. In the letter, the former Congress spokesperson had expressed confidence that this illustrious city would support him and that he would emerge victorious against the two political bigwigs. Here's what Alvi's letter says. For the first time, the idea of a secular India is under threat. India has a liberal tradition and plural in nature because of which secularism has flourished. The majority of the countrymen have played a crucial and a progressive role in upholding liberal and secular values enshrined in our constitution, imagined and ingrained by the founding fathers of our republic. I would request you to permit me to contest against Narendra Modi from Banaras. This city upholds a value of plural Indian subcontinent. Banaras has played a crucial role in forging Indian plural identity. It belongs to Hindus, Muslims, Jains and Buddhists. Mughal emperors used to visit Banaras to learn from the learned Brahmins. I am sure that this illustrious city would support me to strengthen the secular Indian values. The victory of the Congress will be the victory of India. Rashid Alvi justified why he wanted to contest against Modi. He said that the people of Varanasi were secular and that he would teach Modi lessons in secularism. Party sources confirmed that the Congress would take a decision on the candidate from the crucial seat very soon. Rajesh Mishra, who had represented the seat from 2004 to 2009, and Ajay Rai are the two local contenders for the party ticket. The Congress certainly wants to field a formidable candidate from Varanasi, which is Modi's second seat. The BJP's PM candidate's first seat, Vadodara, is challenged by AICC General Secretary Madhusudan Mistri, a close aide of Rahul Gandhi. With Varanasi all set to go to the polls on May 12th, all eyes will be set on Congress's big announcement. Will the Congress go with popular faces such as Dig Vijay Singh, Anand Sharma and Rashid Alvi, or will it go with the local leaders? Whoever is a chosen one will either be a celebrated hero or a martyr of the party. Nevertheless, a battle royale is certainly on the cards. A new stand report. Well, when it comes to elections, it is mudslinging galore. And if the two people involved are Sonia Gandhi and Narendra Modi, well, the mudslinging reaches an all-new level. Today, too, we saw the two political biggies lock horns. Take a look. Sonia and Modi at it again. AICC President Sonia Gandhi and BJP's PM candidate Narendra Modi have certainly not shared the best of rapport. And in the election season, their relationship has hit an all-time low. Yes, Sonia Gandhi and Narendra Modi exchanged pot shots over the patriotism jibe. A day after Sonia targeted Modi during her rally in Delhi by saying some people are beating the drum of patriotism, Modi, in his aggressive self, hit back at her. तो बिना ही चक मैं कह सकती हूँ कि कांग्रेस के नेताओं की कुर्बानी और बलिदान को देखे जिन्होंने जिन्होंने देश और समाज के लिए अपने प्राण न्योछावर कर दिया क्या हमें अब देशभक्ति का ट्यूशन लेने के लिए आपके पास आना पड़ेगा क्या और मैडम सोनिया जी आपने ऐसे विषय को छेड़ दिया है तो आप भी सुनने की तैयारी रखो कि हमारे मछुआरों को मारने वाले जेल में जाने चाहिए कि नहीं जाने चाहिए वो जेल में होने चाहिए कि नहीं होने चाहिए ये हमारी देशभक्ति की कसौटी है कि नहीं है कि इटली के हत्यारों को इटली वापस भेजने का प्रबंध किया था वो कौन थे दैट वॉज मोदी काउंटर अटैक 
But the BJP's PM candidate did not stop there. Addressing his Bharat Vijay rally in Itanagar in Arunachal Pradesh, Modi seemed to know how to play his cards right. He raised the issue of the death of Arunachal Pradesh youth, Nido Tanya, in the national capital. The BJP's PM candidate used the issue to further train his guns on Madam G. The war of words is getting uglier by the day, with politicians taking direct pot shots at each other. Now, with Modi escalating the election hostility to an all new level, how the feud takes course will be interesting to see. A new stand report.